No, there he is. The man, the myth, the concept. Enrique, welcome. How are you today? All good. Nice, uh, nice to talk to you, Marco. Uh, all good. All good. Now, uh, now from home, uh, you know, looking forward for, for the interview. No? <laughs> That's lovely. That's lovely. And I see that you have something special there in the background. That looks amazing. How was your day today? I was cool. I think since uh, this is my day, my daily driver actually. So the the company they they were they were they're they not providing me with a car, but they, you know they provide me with a bike. So you know happy to to ride in it. Um, that was good. I think like production. Uh, you know we, uh, you've been there. So like uh, daily daily life in production is uh, is busy. So we are in this phase of uh, scaling up. Uh, so you know, try to to reach the the production targets, and you know, it's never easy, but uh, yeah, it's uh, fine so far, and Can it's, it's, it's fun as well. Yeah, can only imagine. So short introduction, guys. Uh, my name is Marcus. I am the Gravelholic on on Instagram, and you can find me now on, also on YouTube and Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. So if you can't listen to this full interview right now on Instagram Live, you can always find it afterwards there, uh, or of course also right here on Instagram as well. And uh, this is a series that I'm trying to do in order to help you guys, because there are so many of you that, that reach out to me and ask me questions. And I, I try to answer to the best of my effort, but I'm not the expert here. So I, tr I came up with this brilliant idea of mine, <laughs> is to actually talk to people that knows what they're talking about instead of you relying on my answers. Uh, and with me today, I have Enrique, and he is the production manager of uh, 3T. You can see 3T on my chest here, right? That's that's the brand of the bikes that I ride, and he has a lot of cool things to, to, to talk to you guys about today. And I'm, I'm going to ask a lot of stupid questions. Um, I have done some stupid mistakes of my own, so I might uh, reveal some of them, as I usually do <laughs> when it comes to bikes. And uh, yeah, you can also ask a question during the session if you want to. So please join me in the in the conversation by pressing the little um, question mark in, at your screen and type your question, and we, I'll try to pick it up. Um, but first, Enrique, tell me a little bit about what kind of bike you ride and and uh, and why. Maybe. You, you, see, you can see start on, with that. Um, uh, um, you can see it on, on my bike. I'm, I'm riding currently the Race Max uh, Italia. Of course, it's, uh, actually, what you see there is a uh, is a prototype. You know, when okay. we do this, uh, yes. the tests, um, some lineups and and so on. Uh, you know, I, I used to to ride them. We always measure, but then it's also good to compare the numbers with the with the riding feeling. And uh, yeah, I would say. Uh, I love to ride that bike honestly because it's a kind of a all rounder. What I used to do here around is I try to to get be out of the of the main and busy roads. Uh, so I usually try to leave the city on B roads or cycle path or gravel roads. Um, and then you know I usually I would say that my rides are like seventy percent on on road and then thirty percent gravel. But you know I like this bike because it gives me both thing it, it kind of feel like a like a road bike even though i'm you know with pirelli gravel and 40 millimeter tires i'm, I'm riding and then off-road is is really really capable too so yeah. so yeah i think for, for what i do here uh, i found it like uh, you know the the right one for me i, I have a strat as well but i don't i don't actually i don't i don't ride it at all so oh interesting yeah. so for everyone that that, that that's uh, joining now the strata is the the road bike that that uh, 3t is providing and the race max is one of their gravel bikes that they have um and i i totally agree with you that's actually one of the things that drew me to to the race max it was sort of the versatility of that yeah. bike being able to use it both for road for all road for off road for everything just you can switch off the switch off the wheels right, and you can do the 650s if you want to do. There's plenty of space. There's there's can go really fast as well. I brought my bike to Mallorca and ride the road with it, and I I, I race pretty fast there with some guys. So I'm I'm it can go really fast on the road as well. That's my my assumption or the way the, that I perceive the bike at least. But tell me a little bit about your background. I'm curious, sort of, how did you end up working for 3T? What what what's what's your background? No, that's uh... It's so a kind of a long yeah. story. Um, but to make no, it really I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm aerospace engineer. Um, aerospace. I, I, 
I got yeah my degree at uh, Seville's uh, University and actually from from Spain and you know uh, at the end of the degree you know you could do many things right and and one of the topic uh, I liked the most was yes, right? I'm from Spain yeah. yeah I'm from Spain yeah so one of the topic uh, I, I liked the most was uh, composite materials you know lightweight uh, structure construction and and so on so actually. Uh, I moved towards that, was uh, doing kind of an internship and research at the composite uh, research uh, department uh, at the university. So then I had the possibility to, you know, to test materials, to get the properties, uh, break them and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, I was at the same time involved on a, on a, was Formula Student is a competition within universities in which you have to design and build your own racing car. So oh, we cool. create the team of uh, Seville University. And in that competition, the, judge, the judges, they don't only judge how fast the car will be on, on the track, but what's the project behind, mm -hmm. right? So we were, a, you know, we were a team with a very low budget. So usually teams with high budget, they will uh, use carbon fiber for the body work and for the old aero parts. You know, teams without uh, no money, they will use uh, glass fiber. Yeah right because it's cheaper so we decided to use uh, basalt fiber instead oh uh yeah it's uh we we decided to use that so actually start uh, researching the material getting the properties and and so on you know and we discovered that it's a material that could be really suitable for for frames manufacturing i'm i'm passionate about bicycles mm -hmm. and cycling since since i was a kid and uh, so then I created a startup in which we were making a uh, basal fiber bicycle frame through filament winding. Wow. And uh, so actually we, we were buying uh, 3D components for our oh. bikes. Okay. But uh, yeah, you know, we, we were not doing great on, on sales actually. So pretty bad, I will say. Yeah, it's tough. And then, um, yeah, and then I will say end of 2016, we, I got in touch uh, with, with Rene, actually, the CEO of, mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of 3T. Yeah. And yeah, he told me, Yo, we have this project of you know, bringing production back from Asia to Italy, to manufacture frames in Italy, and so on. They just bought uh, THM. THM is a, a high-end uh, bicycle components located in north of Germany mm -hmm. that they use uh, components using RTM, so resin transfer yeah. molding. And yeah, we, you know, we, we were doing pretty bad on sales. So we, in the end, we were engineers. And so, so yeah, I, you know, was, was clear the, the path I had to, I had to take. I, I, and uh, I can relate, yeah. I can relate to that because that's actually what I did after university as well. I, me and my best friend at the time, we started a startup as well. And we, we ran that for, for a couple of years, but we never became any millionaires on that. Like people do it right now with startups and stuff. So I just got a regular job be, being an engineer myself as well. <laughs> yeah. So I can relate to that. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. But tell so, me, um, the, yeah. I, have a, I have a question there with, that you mentioned, like that, that big thing, like bringing things from Asia to Europe to start. I mean, there's, there's so much to that basically, but um, there's uh, many of the biggest manufacturers, right, as I understand at least, they, they have their production in Asia. And there's a reason because it's cheaper. But there's also specific companies that that's pretty good at doing that, right? Still, but how and why? What are the benefits of manufacturing something in in Europe, and how is that even possible? And what what what's the focus for three T on that? So uh, I think in in in, in biking industry, like ninety nine percent of the brands that they have carbon components, they are made in Asia. In Asia, we can talk from China, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, Vietnam and a bit of, of Taiwan as well. So they, they move from, you know, cheaper labor country to the next uh, cheaper labor country. Yeah. And, and the, uh, from, from the business uh, perspective, um, definitely, you know, it, it gives a lot of advantage. If you really know how this works, when you order um, a frame or a batch of frames um, to an Asian supplier, there are super long lead times, uh, minimum order quantities. You cannot adapt uh, your demand based on the or, or the offer based on the demand. So it makes the whole business uh, quite tricky and 
and, and way more complicated. Why we don't make, uh, why the brands, they don't make frames here in Europe, all of them, once, you know, back in the 80s, every brand was making frames uh, here in, 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 in Europe as well. Yeah. So they, they, they've pretty much, they, they lost that, that know-how, yeah. you know, when from, if you think on the really well-known Italian brands, uh, they produce their frames and their parts in Italy, mm. okay? Um, what happened is that when carbon uh, became the material of choice, you know, unfortunately, one of the drawbacks of composite uh, uh, material is that production is really labor intensive. Yeah. Okay. So, so that production, that actually carbon production, uh, composite production, it was born in Europe and in the US, but it was, uh, it got moved to cheaper uh, labor countries uh, because of uh, they are really labor intensive, no? Yeah. And, and, and that's the main reason. And that happened... Uh, on the late 80s, uh, beginning of the 90s, and, and now brands, they, they find themselves that they don't have actually the knowledge in-house to produce uh, carbon components or composite components yeah. because all that know-how got transferred uh, from actually from, from the US mainly yeah. to Asia. And now the, those Asian suppliers are the ones that they, they kind of uh, rule the market yeah. when, when we talk about uh, carbon components. So. But what is, we the, have what is the lost big, big, biggest benefit for you now? Because you, I guess you, you built the know-how, you have a lot of people in-house. I've met some of you guys uh, when I was down visiting in April. But what, what, what is the real the benefit of, of being sort of in control? Or maybe that is the, the thing. Um, so, yeah, first, first of all, the, 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 that flexibility. I think, you know, uh, the, this project of bringing frames production from Asia to Italy started be, way before the, the coronavirus. But then with coronavirus, we've realized how important it is to produce local, yeah. okay? Because clear transport and China shut down. So, so not only in bike industry, but in all the, the other industries, there have been uh, quite a lot of yeah. chaos and still, and still some. So that that's definitely is one. So when, when you control your own production, you know, and then you control the whole supply chain, you can react quicker to market. It gives you more flexibility. Uh, as from the company point of view, right? And then towards the consumer, towards the end consumer, which is uh, at the end, you know, all the, you know, um, followers you have in here, at the end, they are the ones uh, paying for, for the frames. Uh, what we are offering to them at the advantage is like, we, we are able to provide full trustability of what they are buying. Mm. So, so you've seen yeah. the process. When, when you scan the serial number, which is on the bottom bracket, we can track it down until, you know, when we put the first robin of material in the filament winding yeah. machine, yeah. you know, through all the process. That's, that's definitely a, a, a high value. Yeah, it, is. And, um, it is indeed. Uh, yeah, and, and then for us, it's more to, you know, to very quickly to, to the demand. So I think 3T now uh, came with this uh, project for, mainly it's for dealers, in which they are not forced to buy this many bikes. What they will buy they are production slots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about this. That's super exactly. cool. I think that, that actually is, 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 is quite cool because, you know, also if you go talk to shops and to dealers, they are really under high pressure for, yes. from brands. So you they have don't, to they buy. Don't wanna, they don't want to buy and have in stock. And they, they, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Something they don't know that yeah. they're going to sell later, right? So yeah. they, and, and, and how the business works is like, okay, I have this road bike in red and you and this gravel bike in yellow, mm -hmm. and you need to take this. Yeah. So what 3T has done is say, well, guys, I'm I'm gonna deliver to you what what you need, what you are gonna sell. Mm -hmm. And actually, they are kind of booking production capacity, of course, yeah. because we need to, you know, we need to know whether we're gonna produce thousand, two thousand, three thousand. No, it's like. From, from today to tomorrow, we cannot double production. But they will, they're committing to these production slots. Okay, so I can sell 10 frames uh, next year, but the model, it will be the customer yeah. telling me, yeah. not, not myself, you that's, know, purchasing in advance. That's really so hopefully, cool. you know, we, we hope that uh, that works and, yeah. and, you know, we can offer that. So that's definitely something uh, you could only offer if you own your own production facility exactly so that's that that, that 
you you cannot do that when when you um, rely on a on a third party. No, for, exactly. For <laughs> That's a different story. So I, I want to bring it back to because you mentioned something earlier that I think it would be very interesting to talk about. I know from what I know about carbon manufacturing, you usually use like a big carbon sheet and you put that into a mold and you put resin on it and then you sort of pressure it and then it's done. But you you have something that you call filament winding, right? And that is very very different. And I, it was so intriguing to see this when I was in the in the factory. So can you please explain what that is and what the benefit is for for the people joining us today? Yeah, sure. I think uh, once once we decide to move, you know, production, say we we want to make production for us, it it was quite clear that we couldn't copy the production process that they, 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 they use in Asia, mm. let's say the traditional production process, which is called carbon pre-prec, you know, bladder molding, uh, kind of, as, as you say, yeah. the way that an Asian frame or the race max made in Asia, it is made, it's, it's made out of 350, 400 little mm. pieces, mm. you know, that they lay one on top to the other, over all, like, foam core with the bladder mm -hmm. in, which create the shape of the frame, or so like, like, like the, the lie-up of the frame. Yep. So like each each frame, each, uh, you know, maybe in Asia for that process is a puzzle of 400 pieces in which, uh, you know, a human uh, uh, hand is, is, is behind you know, placing that. We, we had to change completely the perspective. We, we had to start from scratch because at the end, our goal is not to produce the very high end frame that will cost 6,000 frames. What we aim is to produce frames at the same cost, not that the same cost, at the same landed cost, let's say, that the frames that come from, from Asia. So we want to sell to customers frames made in Italy at the same price, they will buy the frame mm -hmm. in Asia, okay? So, so that's what we had to compete with. So for that, we have developed a completely different technology. And technically speaking, it's like, it's filament winding, okay? Because using this filament winding machine that you've seen that we've done, we've designed yep. and we've built, we are able to automatize, let's say, the construction of the tubes of the bikes, okay? While the down tube of the race max, if it is pre prep it will be made out of 50 pieces, in our case, uh, it's done by a machine, CNC control, and uh, yeah, and, and, and then we have that part of automation. Yeah, and the, then the, on, the, the, big, on, the big difference, right, is that the, you don't have sheets of carbon. You use you. It's like the, a, what would you, what, what should you call it? Like it's, a, a, it's a robin, a filament. A it's, called, yeah. it's the filament. It's the, but at the end, it's like a, it's like a like a shed, right? Like a, when you buy carbon pre prep okay. Um, that that is a, a highly processed material. Yeah. Okay, is is what I say. Uh, it's cheaper to buy the the thread, the filament, to make this chair rather than buying the chair because I have to pay someone to produce the chair. So exactly the same with with carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. So the beginning of our process, let's say our process start from the simplest way to get raw material, yeah. or in this case, carbon fiber, and also. Important to mention is that we work with dry fibers. We don't yeah. work with pre -prex. So meaning that if you've seen YouTube videos of how frames are, are made, pre -prex, they need to be storage on a freezer minus 18 degrees, okay? Due to the fact that we work with dry fiber, we can storage material at room temperatures. Yeah. So then we have the advantage also on being uh, efficient in the way we we, we, we we use energy okay so so our process is also quite sustainable in in that and way how we must, spend energy so all less, around there must be so much less scrap as well right or is that just an assumption from my side no no it, it, it is true actually so when when you start actually these pieces the carbon pre prex they, they are like big rolls yeah. okay that they are cnc cut it in little patches of course like manufacturers they, they try to uh, use that as uh, or take advantage of the materials as much as they can but in in our case let's say we are placing the fiber where we need to right so you seen like the tube the filament winding so we go you know exactly. from one side to the to the other to the tube and and yeah we we are putting actually we have a bit of waste, definitely, because then there are some cuts that they need yeah. to be done. But uh, but overall, yeah, it's, it's also on on that point. It's also quite uh, 
quite efficient. And actually, the waste we, we, we generate, we make it into another type of carbon fiber, which is called matte mm -hmm. fiber. And that's what you use to fill some gaps also. So ah, I, okay. that's crap. Okay. It's, it's at the same time also a bit reuse, no? So, um, gotcha. so yeah, I think that, that's definitely an advantage, but also like the process is quite efficient as well on, on energy uh, consumption, yeah. how we use the energies through, through the process. So yeah. tell me, how many, <clears throat> because this filament process, it makes, the, it makes like the tubes, right, more or less. So how many parts is it that, that makes a frame uh, and, and which, which parts are those? So actually, as I say, like if we will make the frame using prepregs, ideally it is about 400 pieces, mm -hmm. more pieces. So when we when we make the the frame, like for 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 you to have an idea, 90% of the fiber weight, okay, you have in your frame, it comes from the filament winding machine, yeah. okay. And what we do on those machines are the tubes. So we we produce like uh, down tube, seat tube, top tube, head tube. And then C stays and chain stays. Yeah. So all those tubes they come from from the machines, mm -hmm. and then the remaining ten ten percent uh, are those those parts that we need to to lay yeah. by hand because we yeah. we the, have, the haven't been able like the, the, to, some some yeah. of the joints, some some reinforcement, some local patches. But uh, but again, it's it's only it's only ten percent. Mm -hmm. So actually, our puzzle is quite easy. Yeah. But tell me, so this brings me now to, to my next question, which is basically, I, I received a new bike uh, and, and it's this Project X, right? Where you have the exposed carbon. It's, it's only uh, um, see-through lacquer on top of it, basically. So what it must have been, how did you feel about that idea? Because it gives kind of a little bit of pressure on your side, right? That you, that you produce something that is exposable that you can sort of because i know i've heard from others like other bikes that when you when you rub them down and you want to repaint them or something you can see that they have they have fillers and they are sort of correcting like mistakes that they've done in production and stuff like that you, you but, but doing something like this you can't really hide anything right so tell me about that how did you feel about that when that idea came up were you scared were you afraid uh, you know what's the worst thing that it was my <laughs> idea you know <laughs> Well, you know, because, um, yeah, because I, 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 I thought it was the way to show, because when we start, when, you know, oh, also like man, people, that's from, amazing. Pe people from Saints and so on, that you are used to the standard carbon look, yeah, which yeah. is this fabric, right? But our process provide a look which is completely exactly. different. So when, when I was talking to, you know, sales and, and marketing at the beginning when when we start look that we have a really cool uh lie-up or carbon looking they were saying no 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 you know like no no you know people people is is at the beginning with carbon fiber became was cool but now no one's want anymore the carbon looking so actually if you look look back on the when we start this the friends we we start making the founders edition and the 60th anniversary edition yeah Founders Edition and 60th Anniversary Edition, the, the, the carbon pattern is, is hidden from a, from, a car, from a very, very thin carbon layer that we were putting on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we didn't want to show the layer because we were thinking like, yeah, people, you know, it's not going to like it. So actually, uh, we, we had one, one rider riding uh, Unbound yeah. and... Um, and I write it that you know I was a bit prototyping with the, with him and so on, so we I make that bike mm -hmm. in which I let's I remove this this carbon fleece it is a, this carbon layer we put to hide the 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 actual um, uh, carbon pattern so yeah. I remove it and I and I we I give that that bike to him without telling to anyone um, and then actually when we build the bike. And you know, I show the bikes to to the people there at, at 3T in the office. Say, wow, how cool is that? Oh, I was telling oh. you this, and um, wow. and then is where the Project X uh, so, was born. Actually. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming up with this brilliant <laughs> idea because I just absolutely love it. It's so stunning. It's, but, it's but, completely uh, fantastic. But as you say, it it puts a lot of pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Because and. It's what we are trying to explain. This project X is, is being fully transparent with yeah. people. 
You know, he's, he's not hiding anything. So it's like if we will ask a, a, in Asia, I want the bike with all the carbon that you can see through all the carbon. They will tell you no chance, absolutely no chance. Yeah. You know, they will put this primer, they exactly. will fill all the pinholes, whatever, and then they will, you know, paint it in black, yellow, or, or yeah. pink. <laughs> but they will never do that. So yeah, that that puts uh, a lot of pressure on us. Yep. But also, I think we we've reached this uh, level of uh, maturity in in the projects in which uh, you know we we are kind of consistent on. Well, I would say we are quite consistent on, on getting that uh, that 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 level at, at the end. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think we cannot be uh, any more transparent than that. You oh, know, we're showing incredible. everything it's completely, completely naked. So, I think it's brute. To be brutally honest, someone told me that you should be that, and and I think this is the way to be brutally honest about the bike. Yeah. Um, okay, so my next question. Um, this there's it's, there's been some announcements the last couple of weeks right with with the three T now going integral, um, with its its uh, stems, and the frames, but tell me a little bit about the the new more stem. It has such a deep heritage, right? And and yeah, this is a super unique new part um, that you guys uh, offer now with the new bikes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, this is so uh, all credit goes to to Gerard Brumen, which is uh, our head of design, and you know, is the mind behind the design of of, of our components. I'm more on on the production side. Let's say I get what he designed, and you know, I try to make them real. Um, but yeah, no, definitely, it's, uh, I think it was something needed. You know, uh, we we need to have this integrated cable routing, and I think it's been through truly thought um yeah now it's uh, it, it seems stupid but just a, such a small piece it makes the bike to look completely completely yeah. different it's a completely different bike when you put the actually the the, the more stem uh, on it um and yeah it, it gets the the he 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 based the design based on the 3t i think back in the 80s they had a stem called more yeah. um 25 years fiber, old, so. uh, yeah so so yeah he, he got the expiration in there of course you know with new techniques but uh but yeah it's uh, i think it's like launching a, a new model by just uh changing the stem right it, it's 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 completely different i think it was needed and uh yeah i think you know the market the, the market was was asking for yeah. it so 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 more was uh you know more ourselves that, answering the market just a detail about that Stem, it's right it's it's rooted underneath the stem right um it's not going I inside of the stem uh, no. but underneath the stem so it's, it becomes easier to to maintain and to take care of everything that needs to with headset bearings and stuff like that right am i yeah so actually the, the stem like the the cables they they don't pass inside they pass on a is that mm -hmm. kind of hidden mm -hmm. so eventually you know you you are riding a hundred millimeter stem but then you say uh, i need to ride 110 or 90 you take it out and put a new one and that's it you know yeah, because not... that's so different there's so many bike brands that i've heard of and there's there's this thing in within the industry as well people say it. it's very beautiful we integrated but it's such a hassle to maintain and to to do maintenance and repairs and stuff like that or or to change it where you need to take out everything you know just redo it but this is a quite unique system that you can do that um yeah yeah uh, it simplified on on that side. They're definitely, the cables they run inside the building. Mm. So if if you need to do uh, buildings maintenance, you know you need to disassemble all. Yeah. But okay. that, that that's pretty much in in every in every one. But on the stem side, definitely, and on the spacer adjustability and so on, you know you you know you just can do it as uh, as it was a, a normal stem. So tell me, you mentioned Gerard, and I actually wanted. To to, to, to ask you about him. He's such a prominent figure in the cycling industry, right? Uh, being founder of Cervelo, being being founder of Open, now co-owner co -owner and a designer of, of uh, 3T. T tell me about it. He's quite a mythical figure almost. What, what's, how is it to work with him? Yeah, I think, no, definitely. He, he's made a, a name in bike industry. You know, he's, he's probably one of the best designers, uh, bike designers out there. And and he's someone that uh, it you know sees the the future in a way. You know, uh, with if you think on gravel bikes, he kind of invented that. Mm. 
with 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 open and then later with yeah. with 3t so actually so so you know and then like the the bb drop uh, to to increase the dark clearance you know those, those things they they are actually signed by gerard mm. and pretty much everyone is is now copying yeah um, so yeah. so that, that that that's clear and yeah i said definitely it's a it's a, it's a brilliant mind so on, on that side that's uh that, that's clear found cervelo uh, succeed that cervelo and actually he's one he's been probably the one like really pushing to to make frames or, or products in in-house uh, you know that, that's a bit of confidentiality in the whole yeah. story but if you, if you look at uh, his days at Cervelo, they, they were making the Cervelo, the R5CA, Project California. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with that project, they didn't aim to produce just the very high end. They were aiming to produce all Cervelos in the US, no? The project at the end, it, it didn't happen. He's been trying and, uh, and now, you know, he's been the one that uh, has given us like all, myself and the team, uh, the trust and the confidence to, you know, to really go for it. Uh, it's been a, on our side, it's been a long development. So we've been having a lot of ups and downs because the process is completely new. We had to develop it and think they were not going straight always. Um, you know, he, he, he showed to be patient and to trust us and, you know, hopefully we, we pay that back. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So let's see, there, there's some questions in the q and so let's see what we have here. Um, someone is asking yeah, about the extra large or 61 size um, within new integrated. Is that something that you have up your sleeve uh, or will you stay with the four sizes is it right now? No, I think, I think that that's, we're actually waiting for, for the market to, 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 to make the new mall. So as you know, we have the Race Max Italia is happening in four sizes right now, yep. 51, 54, 56, and 58. We did that because at the end, the tool in the molds, this is a huge investment. And we wanted to, you know, to, to, to really see if the projects, you know, was, you know, taking off or, or not. Now it's seen that is, is it, I would say it already take off. Um, so yeah, I, we, we are, we are gonna probably add those, uh, you know, both like 48, like the the smallest size, and the and the biggest one. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And there's one question from uh, Nadi. We actually replied to that one. Uh, if you do the film and winding on the complex shape, the whole frame, which is not the answer, but actually the the other thing that she asked, if you bond them together, the parts. So yes, I can actually answer that question. I'm the expert. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we don't bond them together. Oh, no, okay. So tell me about that then. How no, I know maybe what 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 was she or he meant. Uh, we we are making the tubes with the filament winding, mm -hmm. but we don't glue the tubes. What we are doing with the filament winding is we are getting like dry fiber preforms. Okay, uh, yeah, so yeah, those preforms right. they are placed into the mold, and what we get out of the mold is a single piece. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because I know what she meant because we are not the only ones making filament winding. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can say like there are brands like Bastion, Fetka, some uh, custom manufacturers in the US that I know they produce filament winding tubes. But actually, if you look at those tubes of those brands, they are round tubes. Yeah. The Race Max is not a round no, tube. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's so, not round at all. <laughs> so, like the the big deal of our process is not the filament winding as as it is filament winding. The the big deal of our process is that we have created that kind of machine which is able to to produce complex shapes, no round tubes anymore, like complex shapes, dry fiber mm -hmm. preforms, so because they are dry, and then they are stable enough that they can mani be manipulated and be placed it together into a mold. So actually, when when we open the mold, it's a single piece. We we don't we we glue main triangle with the rear triangle. Yeah. We do that. That's what you mm -hmm. saw. But I, I think what what they what they meant. Uh, no, we don't glue. We you know we don't produce part tubes that glue them. We yeah. we produce a single piece. We use the filament winding to produce the preforms, not to produce like our an already cure. 
uh, to you. And you, you, you don't need to answer this question, but I did understand when I was in the factory that th this whole process of not making round tubes, because that's pretty straightforward and simple, right? But to have complex yeah. forms with filament winding is much more complicated and you have a little bit of secret sauce there to that process, right? As I understand it. I think we, we had to put the whole process together, right? From from placing the robins uh, uh, until until the end. So yeah, it's so so to to put fiber on a tube, whatever the shape, that's yeah. easy. The tricky thing here is to remove the tube. Later, exactly. No? So so <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what we we actually have developed this this way. Actually, is 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 patent is patent pending as as we are mm -hmm. uh, being patent pending in the in the whole process. So yeah, I think this is one of the things. Like you know, we can produce any 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 shape. We we were making the the back in the days we were prototyping with the Strada. The Strada, the C tube of the Strada is even yes. worse. We were making that filament wound as well. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So so um, so yeah, that that that's the that's the big deal. Yeah. You know, we are able to create because those uh, those tricky very shapes. Very circular shape following the right. Yeah, it's, it pretty much follows the, 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 the wheel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very, yeah. I love the design of that bike too. Yeah. Um, so what uh, you, I want to sort of start wrapping up, but I have a couple of few more questions and I want to tie back it to what you actually said when we just started this call and you talked about, oh, I'm trying to make the production better and whatever you said. But what is it now? What's, what's your biggest challenge now ahead um, from your point of view? Uh, now it's a scale up. So, mm. so we, we, we are growing a lot, the, the team, like uh, at the beginning of the, not even like March uh, this year, we were in production like five people. Uh, now we are 14. Wow. So, so it, and, and, and since it's a process that we have developed, we, we need to train the people mm -hmm. not properly. So, so now it's, we are in this phase of training people, but at the same time trying to scale up the the production. And you know that that's that's you know now's the main thing going on. You know, to try to get people, you know, properly trained, yep. and you know, and and and, and being as, as productive as as possible. So I would say that's the that's the biggest deal so far. Like human resources. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Always, it's always tricky to find good people. I know that for a fact as well. I do that, what I do as well. Trying to hire people is just super, super tricky. And yeah. um, I wanted to ask you as well, like, what is what is the time frame like from when you basically start manufacturing a frame and and or the parts of the frame and when when is it done? Sort of how what's the time span we're talking about? Is it like a day or is it a couple of weeks or a couple of weeks? What, what's what's the time frame? So uh, we we are in a uh, this is really technical on kind of a one piece flow process yeah. um, so actually uh, our lead time like the throughput time from the friends is we press the button of the filament winding machine mm -hmm. until we ship the frame to the painter okay uh, it's about five six days working wow. days it is that fast yeah yeah yeah, yeah because uh, it, it depends on you know maybe whatever you do the winding first in the morning or, or mm -hmm. not but uh, yeah it's, it's, we're talking about that five to six uh, working days kind gotcha. of yeah. and what's what's your target what are you what are you aiming for is it, are you, do you want to half it or do you want to cut it down by a day or two what's uh... mm, no n not really that because at the end you know there are those times yeah, okay. right uh, especially now that we are really working in one shift uh, at the end you have like especially like uh, curing times like the bonding curing times Can't so like you know you, you pick up something from the day after but uh but yeah it's um it, i mean if, if we're in a hurry we say yeah we have to make this frame whatever yeah. we are kind of if we will start the winding in the morning we will be bonding at the end of the same day yeah. just for you to have an idea so the day after we could be shipping the frame to the painter so it's two days eventually but you know it's um Usually is that, it's those uh, five days. Cool, we got another good question here from Antonio. And I actually also want to ask that question because I might want to retrofit it on my, my old uh, race max. Will, will uh, the new stems be also available for, for the old bikes? I guess it, you need not only a stem, right? You also need a, for, the, need a fork. The, the fork. Uh, uh, 
you know, uh, I mean, eventually, so, so the, the tricky thing here is like, could you do that? Of course. Uh, what do you need? So you need to have a, a fork, so which actually the, the, you, you might need to buy us ready to paint and then to match it with the colors of your frame because we, we won't have like force painted to match the old no, colors. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes so, sense. so you take it ready to paint, yeah. you match the colors, uh, you get the, the more stem, that, that's okay. The only thing then is that you are going to have this uh, hole for where the cable is coming. Yeah. You need to take so, it to someone that can make a nice little uh, patch on the top. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 usually, you know, we, that we know there are those shops that they do repair yeah. frames. So, well, uh, eventually, cool. it's not go it's not gonna be that simple, right? Because, but people that uh, you know might uh, like to to do DIY things, then uh, it, it can be exactly. possible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, let's try to wrap up. Uh, uh, I have one last question: Is that will you be joining uh, 3T and potentially myself at Francia Corta in two weeks for the big uh, event? Yeah, uh, what, what are you going to write? Well, I'm going to... The 300? No, oh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. if I even can make it. But if I can make it, I'm probably going to do the... What is it, 150? I think... 150. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying trained enough to do the 300. I would die. <laughs> no, no. I... Yeah, I think I will... No, if I come... If, I, if we, you know, agree that uh, we both... They, we need to write the 150, they, they, win, they won't make me work. So... <laughs> So, you know, I will be able to write. So ideally 150. Last year I, I didn't write it. So I, I, I had to, you know, because, you know, at the end, like all the people working at 3T, we work there and, you know, we try to help the event and, you know, yeah, for I the breaks imagine. and so on. But, um, uh, yeah, I think in, in, in this year I might have the chance to to, to write it. So, cool. so yeah, yeah, 150, uh, 300 is, yeah. is a lot for me. Yeah, me um, too, me too. I'm not mentally prepared. <laughs> Mentally, I can do it. My head can do it, but I don't think my legs can do it. <laughs> I mean, in two days and sleeping in a hotel yeah. and so uh, I could do it. But yeah, of course, that's you know. that's, that's the difference. <laughs> very, very cool. Um, so my last question, as I always uh, try to end it with, what's 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 going to be in your next ride? Uh, on bicycle frame? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Where, where where will you ride next? Ah. Uh, uh, like 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 right like next weekend you mean yeah but usually uh, i go here around the the mountains uh, of uh, nothing prepared really like uh, usually on saturdays like i do like a four or five hours ride something yeah. like that during during the week uh not much time so but i i commute to work every day so it's about 10k uh one way and, and the way back like 20k a day um yeah usually on the weekends uh you know like about four or five hours uh you know trying to get out of the city on mm -hmm. on, on the bike path here on the valley we have a bike paths on, on the valley so i i go through there and then when you are uh, up in the valley and do some climbs uh, i like to go always on the on the mountain side never on the on the flat uh, on the flat side yeah we never mentioned that but uh, the head, headquarter and the and the factory is based in bergamo right in northern yeah. italy yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, for the landscape, the landscapes and so on is uh, is, is is quite cool. Absolutely and then beautiful. Francia, Francia Corta, where the yellow bombs uh, is even I would say even nicer because it's uh, near Iseo Lake. Uh, you know, with the vineyards and and so on. So probably that part is even more suitable for you know for 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 gravel. Actually, it's, it's quite 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 cool event. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a big shout out to you who can join. Uh, two weeks, uh, I think it's the weekend of 13th and 14th of October. Yeah. And check out um, Jeroboam and Frank Cecorta. You can just Google it or you can go, you can find it through the 3t.bike website. Yeah, if and, you Google uh, Jeroboam, you'll, you'll find it. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for this. This was absolutely magnificent, uh, Enrique. I'm, I'm so blessed to have had this chat with you. I really hope that I get to see you soon again. Uh, but uh, until then, have a nice uh, evening and thank you very much. Uh, thanks for, for inviting us, for giving us the chance to, you know, to explain to your audience, you know, what we are, what we are doing here uh, in Italy. Uh, yeah, no, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do the 150 together. Sounds good. I can't.
promise, but I, I will try. Oh, we'll try. <laughs> okay. Super. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Okay. My, my pleasure. Bye-bye. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye.